And well, the reason that it can be uh, a huge time saver when you're tweaking the light is not only that you can relight your scene just by using curves or color balance nodes, you can render as a multipass file, OpenEXR multipass, and save um, ambient occlusion, color, environment lighting, and um, yeah, I think that's it, and image. Because let's say these are the global passes. I would, I would call them global passes because they don't change when you change your lighting. So the, the ambient occlusion always stays the same unless you're tweaking the animation. So let's say you have finished your animation. Your scene is finished and you just tweak the lights. But you still want to have this nice ambient occlusion stuff without having to wait forever to render the ambient occlusion. Then you can save this file, not as PNG or JPEG, but you change your, where is it anyway? You change your output to, here it is. Your output change, you change your output from PNG to multi-layer. And if you render that and save this file, you will have a multi-layer file that includes all your passes in that file in 32-bit floating points, so you really don't have any quality um, problems. So let me just save this. Save as, where is that? Samples, passes, okay, pass. And if you now add an image and then open this multi-layer, you will have the option to choose the layer. And when you choose the mid-ground layer, you have all the passes that we have here. So you can now just go ahead and replace the inputs from, from your render layer with, let's say, the ambient occlusion from your saved multi-layer. And of course, if you have an animation, you will have uh, a sequence of multi-layers. So you can really use that. And maybe let me just use the alpha of that. What's, what's the purpose of what the purpose? Yeah. Let me just show you. Let me just show you. Well, the purpose of that is because when you just tweak the lighting, you know, you change the position of lamps, the color of lamps, and stuff like that. You re-render constantly to check: does it look right? Is it nice? And you don't want to save. Uh, you don't want to wait forever because. No, but just let's say we wanted to add to add lights and tweak the position of the light, tweak the color of the light. Currently, we are. I mean, it's not that bad. You know, it's it's uh, it's okay the the render time. But when you have when we are using ray traced ambient occlusion and reflection and stuff like that, we would really wait for a long time. Um, just to see how the light of one lamp changes, but the ambient occlusion stays the same. It's always the same. Ah, because you render all the layers again. Yeah. Just need the lighting or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. So you could set up, you could use a node setup that uses the global passes that are ambient occlusion and color and environment light because they don't really change when you change the, your lighting. So you can use the input from your pre rendered sequence with ambient occlusion and color and environment light and then turn off ray tra or turn off uh, ambient occlusion in your render and then uh, when you render you use ambient occlusion environment light and color from your saved sequence and then you use diffuse specular and shadow from your actual render and that will just save you a huge amount of time, even though it might get a bit complicated at some point. I don't want to rotate this directly. 
you know. So I could I could ch set it to not inherit the rotation, and then rotate it directly. But I don't really want to do that. I want to have a rotation control that's independent for it. So, for right now, I can say I already have a control here. This is my first pass kind of solution, right? Is that I already have a control here. It's this IK leg bone. So why not have the foot's rotation match the IK leg bone's rotation as a first pass, you know? So I'm going to add a copy rotation constraint between the two bones and then I'll use this IK control to control both the rotation and the location of the foot which is well and good. So what I'm going to do is going to select the IK leg control shift select the foot and instead of using add constraint here I'm going to use another hotkey control shift C and I get my whole constraint menu. So the shift I is a nice shortcut to just add an IK constraint but if I want to add another constraint that's not an IK I have to type shift control C to add a constraint and I'm gonna go and add a copy rotation constraint and now the rotation of the foot matches the rotation of the IK and so if I move the body the rotation of the foot isn't changing but I once again have a problem where if I go into edit mode things are looking different from when they are in um, not edit mode, in uh, pose mode and I can fix that by just once again tweaking my IK control to match the rotation of the foot by default there are actually other ways um, but for now let's stick to this one so I, yes I have one question um, the IK was uh, attached to the heel or the uh, oh. The you can either do you can do it both ways can you, you touch multiple parts to the same uh, IK? yeah I mean you're only going to use one IK control per chain and um, but you can either do it to the calf uh -huh. in which case you would have the use t tail checked on so it uses this joint or you can do it to the heel bone in which case you would uncheck use tail so it would go to the head of the bone so both are equivalent okay, so you so I can do either. you can do either way yeah I cannot understand why it changes when uh, you switch between the edit mode and the post mode right now yeah okay basically the, the Change yeah, so basically if you have the, the target somewhere not where the bone is it's going to, the constraint, it doesn't apply in edit mode. Edit mode is just editing kind of the rest position of the bones. So the constraint is only working outside of edit mode and the pose. So when you go into the pose mode, the constraint is going to apply and it's going to move the chain towards wherever the target is. Yeah. So the only way to have it not jump is to have the edit mode position matching so that it doesn't jump. Does that make sense? Yeah, but uh, so I have to redo the joints? Or you just have to move the target in this case. You don't want to move the geometry joints in edit mode because they're presumably already in the right place. So you just want to move the targets to be in the right place. Okay. Yeah. Does it matter if the IK is ro in rotation, in pose, or edit mode, in some direction? Right. The, it's, at first, it's only going to look at the location of the IK bone. Mm -hmm. So if you're just using it as an IK target, its rotation doesn't matter, just the location. But now that we added a copy rotation constraint to it, now its rotation also matters. Uh, IK does have an option of copying the rotation as well as the location. I generally never use this option because I find it uncontrollable pretty much, but some people use it. I don't use it. So yeah. do we add the copy rotation in the calf or the ankle? Uh, always the heel in this case. Because the calf, we don't want to change its rotation, the IK is controlling it. 
What's the question here? 